Um, OK, so we're going to move swiftly on because um, we are running still behind. I'm going to hand over now to uh, Mark Seymour from Treetops Academy, who again are starting the journey about food, healthy eating. And they're a, a school down in Kent, or a group of schools down in Kent. I think there's a couple of schools. So I'm going to hand over to Mark. Hi, hi everyone. Um, I'm a finance manager in my school. I don't see many finance managers here. Um, I was chucked under the bus by our head teacher, so um, it was fall fallen on my shoulders because she thought I liked gardening. I've been at the school two and a half years. It's actually a group of three schools within half a mile of each other, um, and we're in a very deprived area of Maidstone. We, I'm told we're in the top 10% in the UK. So we have a lot of social issues in the middle of social housing, high percentage of free school meals. So my experience, I've worked across uh, private schools in the UK. I was in West Africa for three years, working in a British school in Togo, um, next to Ghana. And I just think that taught me that we have a lot of benefits living in this country and we don't always make the most of it. So what I've tried to do in Maidstone is, um, as you'll see from some of the pictures, and I'll just keep flicking through, we have huge grounds in this particular school. This is treetops. Um, and what we've tried to do is to just use some of the grounds so the young people can go out and grow vegetables and fruit. We're very lucky. We've got a great polytunnel. Um, and I've got a wonderful groundsman. This is Danny. He was an ex-chef in the NHS. Not too happy about that. That's why he's a gardener now. Um, and he's a brilliant guy and he loves working with the children and it's his passion. These were um, natural British uh, fruit trees that we got from um, an organisation. And we've tried to do it nicely so it looks nice for our parents and our governors and, and our young people. And they thoroughly enjoy it. This area here was a development that we did for our nurture unit, children with additional needs and we put gravel paths in and um, just behind that you'll see some grasses which were very young last year and the, the young people love going out there and listening to the gravel and playing them we we grew sunflowers and everything else like that um, the way i got a, um, partnered up with tim and the team here is we use a company called contract dining company um, they look after a group of schools in maidstone and they'd been to one of Tim's conferences, I think. So they came on board with us and they are um, help funding a lot of the um, produce that we're putting in. They've given us seeds and we're growing so many potatoes around the school. This is Danny again. These are our bald ladies, we call them. These were six uh, expatriate hens that we got about two or three months ago. And they were in a very sorry state when I went and picked them up from Biggin Hill. That one looked like it was oven ready when we first got her. Uh, seriously, they're in a bad state of repair. Um, there's a couple of pictures coming up where they look remarkably better now. And we're very fortunate. We're getting out of the six hens on average three, three eggs a day. We've got a couple of bantams knocking around, but that's where they are now. And that's only after two months of living relatively free. And um, our staff come in at the weekends this is the polytunnel, we've got aubergines at the back, we've got chilies, we've got potatoes, strawberries top right. Um, we got them from the same supplier that supplies Tesco's for their commercial grown strawberries because we wanted to show the children how to grow them on a very small commercial basis. Um, we plant all the seeds ourselves, young people get, come out and um, help us Friday afternoon activity. And also within our school, we've got a great training kitchen. Tim saw it when he came down to see us. And at, we've just started our journey with cooking with young people, and they do a pizza club every Friday afternoon with our chef. Um, fantastic time. The kids really enjoy it. Um, I think the benefits we get is the engagement of the young people. A lot of single parents on our site. Um, we have a lot of... Um, difficulties with our young people um, so I think for them it's a great experience um, outside learning we do a lot of that in our school we've got a woodland which I didn't take any pictures of it was a bit dark the last few days this is our willow igloo um, for some of our 
children that don't always engage. That's our second year of growing that, and that's an area where they can go and sit quietly, read a book. When it's fully grown, they might need a light in there, I think. But anyway, at the moment, it's OK, they can read. Um, I think the challenges we face as a school is getting the staff and the teachers involved and engaged. That's a massive challenge for us, and we haven't achieved it yet. Um, and we've just changed our head teacher as well. So we don't know what the future holds for us. This year was an experimental year, and I hope she, the new head teacher, will come along to maybe one of these, Tim, and we can inspire her to, to carry it forward. So some of the barriers we've had is we have a lot of teachers in our school that have been there a long time, very traditional. They don't want to go outside the classroom. And what I'm targeting is the younger teachers that are just coming up from uni and trying to inspire them. We're using Henri Le Worm. We're just starting doing that. So thank you, sir. Um, and I can probably share this with people. I'll stay in the room. I'm actually um, moving very soon out to Dubai to a, a school out there. So I'm just taking some of these ideas with me. And uh, Henri Le Worm will go with me as well. So you'll be truly international. Thank you.